hungry? Well, who isn't? Appetite seems to be one thing every living creature has in common. The eating habits of animals is one of the most diverse studies in nature. God has employed a seemingly endless variety of physical differences. The jungle is full of strange animals with odd eating habits. This creature looks like he has a tail on both ends. It's an anteater. His main diet is termites and ants. His long razor sharp claws are a hindrance to walking but just the tool he needs for carrying open old stump trunks loaded with termites. Digging termites out of their narrow tunnels would be an impossible task for most animals. The anteater has exactly the right equipment, a long, slender, sticky tongue. He thrusts it deep into the termite burrows, trapping the ants and termites on its sticky surface and drawing them back into its mouth. The suspenders, by the way, have nothing to do with keeping his trousers up. They just happen to be unusual markings on this altogether unusual animal. The powerful claws and strong prehensile tail are equally helpful when the anteater dines in the trees. There seems to be no lack of ants in his pantry. <laughs> The anteater, equipped in a remarkable way to live exclusively on insects. For many years, man has known that rattlesnakes could, in some strange, mysterious manner, find their prey in the dark. But how? In a sense, the rattlesnake has two sets of eyes, and the organ that sees in the dark is an ape or depression on either side of the head. Dr. Raymond C. Coles and Dr. Theodore H. Bullock of the University of California at Los Angeles have contributed much to the world's new knowledge of this strange phenomenon. The method employed in obtaining this information is a unique and interesting experiment. Dr. Coles milks the rattler of its venom. Dr. Bullock anesthetizes the reptile. The snake is blindfolded, depriving him of sight in the realm of visible light. Platinum electrodes are connected to the nerves coming from the pit organ so that the tiny signals flashed from the organ to the snake's brain can be intercepted. These signals are amplified so that they may be heard on a loudspeaker or recorded on a graph recorder. And now for the test. The snake is obviously excited by the human hand. A warm-blooded animal has crossed its path. The snake can see the invisible infrared rays from the heat of a human hand. An ice cube is of little interest to the rattler. Why? Well, an animal that cold would be dead. Lighting a match in front of the snake is like turning on a searchlight of infrared rays. The recorder shows a sudden violent reaction. A piece of special heat absorbing glass cuts off the ray and the snake's reaction stops. The pit viper, night prowler of the desert and mountainside, marvelously equipped by the creator to find its necessary food on the darkest night. The ocean is a veritable sea soup. The abundance of microscopic plant and animal life is quite beyond measure. There are a number of creatures in the ocean very well fitted for straining seawater 
of its microscopic inhabitants. One of these is the Barney Mill. It is found on rocks along the shore and on wharf pilings in prodigious numbers. They remain permanently fixed in one place, fastened by means of a leathery stalk called a gooseneck. But the main part of its body is encased in a protective shell. When the barnacle is covered by the rising tide, the shell pops open and the legs of the animal, looking like feathered ostrich plumes, are thrust out to trap tiny plants and animals. These invisible creatures are strained from the water by the feather-like fish net. When the legs, called cirri, are drawn back into the shell, the captured food is carried deep inside to its mouth. One zoologist described the barnacle as an animal that stands on its head and kicks food into its mouth with its feet. Have you ever seen the fish that spits? The archer fish has a good reason for its odd behavior. It's shooting for game. A stream of water is shot from the fish's mouth like a bullet. The prey is stunned by the force of the water and drops to the surface below. The spitting fish seldom misses the target. The archer fish has an unusual problem, the very serious one of refraction. Because the fish is under the water, he sees the insect where it isn't. Have you ever tried to shoot fish? If you have, you know it's practically impossible. For a fish to make all these split-second computations necessary to hit the target would seem utterly fantastic, wouldn't it? But the archerfish does it, time and time again. Marksmanship we cannot attribute to its own reason or intelligence. Again, our little creature has been endowed by the Creator with an innate skill for obtaining food that would be completely out of its reach. The chameleon is the only animal in the world that can lasso its food more than a body's length away without moving anything but its tongue. Another example of unusual equipment. They are mounted in ball turrets, and one sight organ is able to rotate independently of the other. While one eye is searching for an enemy, the other eye is searching for a bite to eat. When the tasty prey is sighted, the eyes work in unison, probably to improve the aim of the tongue. The skin of the chameleon is a heavy plate of armor. And it's not only tough, it's made up of an amazing cell structure that enables the chameleon a moment's notice. Camouflage is as old as life itself. These baby chameleons are just a few hours old, and already they're on their own, making immediate use of all that God has given them, from the tiny ball turret eyes to the feet the tongue and the tail. Imagine something like this happening to you when you were just a few hours old. To the chameleon, it's all a part of this wonderful new life. 
no formulas or bottles are necessary. When the tiny reptile feels the need for sustenance, he simply helps himself. A grasshopper is a giant compared to the baby chameleon, but the little fellows show no fear. Perhaps they realize that someday a grasshopper will be nothing more than a bite to eat. Everywhere in nature, we see the unmistakable evidence of God's creative wisdom. The eating habits of his creatures are among those commonplace things that speak so eloquently of God's design and thoughtfulness. God has provided for our needs, too, in a very special way. He has not only provided for our physical needs, but our spiritual hunger as well. For he has declared, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. 